the morning. Oh, good morning, Judah. <clears throat> So we'll get started in um, just about a minute. And so today, um, all the classes I've really done have been gentle more so. Um, so today we're gonna work through a flow. Um, and we're actually gonna work through a slower moving flow. Good morning, Pat. Um, so we'll, we'll get into the poses, we'll hold them for a while. Um, maybe a couple of breaths. Good morning, Cynthia. Um, and then from, um, so if you, good morning, Dira. Um, so just kind of hang out with me. Um, we'll go through some modifications prior to getting into the pose. Good morning, Jenny. Um, and then once we get into the pose, find your variation of the pose, and then we'll work through it that way. Um, and we'll be ready to go. So what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and start on your mat. Um, find a comfortable seat, whatever works for you. Um, on your knees, on your bottom, against a wall. We'll eventually move into some cat-cow and then start our standing practice. So once we start our standing practice, we'll stay there for about half of the class and then we'll work our way down into some deep seated stretches. And then you got Laura this afternoon at 12 for deep stretch. So for anything that you need to deepen that stretch a little bit, it'd be a great class to take. All right, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and make our way onto our mats. Find a comfortable seat, whatever works for you. Get the fleshy part of your seat out. Good, and then just take your hands, place them in your lap, up or down. Create some gentle movement if you need, just to kind of get yourself situated and comfortable. And then all I want you to do here is just close your eyes, chin parallel with the mat, and then think about elongating your spine, right? So pulling that belly button in and up, opening the heart, Allow the shoulders to be down and back and heavy. And just take a moment, relax the jaw, take notice if you're clenching your teeth together. And then I want us just to take a couple of cleansing deep breaths in. And we made it through the weekend. I'm not sure if the weekend is a thing anymore, um, but happy Monday. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath in, filling the lungs. Filling the belly rise, hold the breath for a second, and then exhale, sigh it out, let it go. <sighs> Inhale, chest rise, belly rise, hold it. Exhale, sigh it out. <sighs> Again, inhaling in, chest rising, belly rising. Hold that breath for a second. Exhale, sigh it out. Just take a couple of more deep breaths. Just inhaling in, nice deep slow breaths, chest rising, belly rising. And exhale, release. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good, you can stay right here. Maybe float the eyes open if you wish. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start to roll the shoulders back here, big shoulder rolls. And then let's take them forward. Just waking up the body, warming up the body this morning before we work through our flow sequence. Good, go ahead and take your right arm up overhead. And then go ahead and take the left fingertips down to the mat beside you. Let's reach up and then take it over to the side slightly. Not forcefully, don't get somewhere where you get in here and you're like, oh, I can't breathe, I can't hold it. Don't hold your breath. Find that place that you can lengthen through the side, like you're lengthening from your fingertips down through the armpit all the way down into that hip. You can feel that rib cage expanding here. Breathing, five, 
four, three, two, and one. Bringing it back up. Roll out the shoulders if you need. Let's go ahead and take those right fingertips to the floor beside you. Go ahead and take that left arm up, reach it up, grow, and then exhale, take it over to the side. Again, feeling that stretch from your fingertips through the armpit, deep down into that hip. Feel the rib cage expanding on that left side. Don't get down here, really reach, reach out of that arm, out of that shoulder socket. Five, good, four, three, two, and one, bring it up, roll it out. And good, now from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and roll over onto our hands and our knees. If you're not happy on your hands and your knees, we're gonna start with those modifications given before the pose. Stay on your bottom, and you're gonna work through cat and cow this way. If you're happy on your hands and your knees, let's go ahead and roll over hands and knees. Let's put our wrist underneath our shoulders, spread your fingers knees underneath your hips and then i want you to think here about elongating your spine right so a lot of times we get here and we tuck our chin to our chest or we look forward and we're kind of arching into the spine so think about if there was a broomstick tied to your back how flat it would make your back it would extend from the top of your head all the way down to your tailbone so your gaze should be right between your thumbs and then think about taking the elbow crease here if they face forward and rotate them in to face each other. A lot of people are double jointed and they don't realize that they're double jointed. So if your elbow creases face this way, don't mock it out, turn them in. And then from here, we're gonna start to work through some cat and cow. So take that deep breath in and on your exhale, we're gonna contract, we're gonna pull up through the spine, tuck the chin to the chest and look at the belly button. Inhale. Open it up, drop through the belly, look up towards the sky. Exhale, round through the spine, tuck the chin to the chest, look at the belly button, pulling up. Inhale, open it back up. Exhale, away, pulling up through the spine, chin to chest, look at the belly button. Inhale. Open it back up. Exhale. Inhale. We're gonna go for one more exhale and then we're gonna sink back into child's pose. Exhale, pull up through the spine, chin to chest, look at the belly button and hold it here for me, really pulling up in between those shoulder blades and then slowly begin to sink, pressing into the palms of the hands, sink the hips back towards the heels, allowing the forehead to rest on the mat and keep the arms nice and active here. So try not to get your forearms to touch the mat. I want you to think about really finding some length here. Now, if you're still in that seated cat and cow pose, all we're gonna do is we're gonna open the legs a little bit wider, allow the hands to rest down in front of us here and allow the head to hang, just relaxing through the back. For those of you that are in child's pose, your knees can be together. They can be slightly apart or they can be super wide. The choice is yours. Just make sure the arms are active here. Take two more deep breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Press yourself back up into that seated position or tabletop. We're gonna work through threading the needle next. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking that right arm up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, you're gonna tuck it under, thread the needle. Now, if your head doesn't touch the mat, you can always take a block and place it under the head for some support. And if you're in that seated position, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take that right arm across. So again, to always working through those modifications for each sequence. So that right arm is under and we're resting here and thread the needle. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Take one more breath here. And then I want you to begin to press yourself back up into that tabletop position. Move it around if you need. And then when you're ready, let's go ahead and take that left arm up towards the sky. Exhale, tuck it under, thread the needle. And again, if you're in that seated position, we're just gonna take the arm across. And notice if you take the arm across, if you take the arm across your throat, you get a little bit of a deeper stretch than going across your chest. You get a little bit more blocked here up, you get a little bit deeper. So going where you feel best. <clears throat> And go ahead and take one more breath here. And when you're ready, press yourself back up, send that arm back up towards the sky, bring it down tabletop position. And now from here, we're gonna to begin to make our way into our first down dog of the day. So those hands come out just slightly above, right in front of the shoulders. Spread those fingers, tuck your toes, slowly begin to lift your hips. So we're kind of in this hover position and then as you begin to rise up higher, the tailbone goes up towards the sky. We lengthen through the spine and then begin to straighten the legs, lowering the heels down towards the mat. Now, if this is really tight this morning, keep those knees bent, really keep some buoyancy here. It'll help. And then as you slowly begin to stretch it out, you can slowly lower those heels down towards the mat. Now, while you're here, I want you to think about your ears as being in line with your arms. Think about the same thing we did in tabletop, lengthening through that spine and not dropping in that spine. So really lengthen here. And while we're here, I want you to begin to walk it out, slowly lowering, one heel down and then the other. Just walking your dog, warming up the body. Good. Now rise high onto both toes. Lower the heels down towards the earth. Rise high to the toes. Lower the heels down towards the earth. This time go ahead and bend both knees and just begin to tiptoe your feet up towards your hands. Forward fold at the front of the mat. Grabbing opposite elbows here, allow your head to hang. So don't look forward unless you need to for balance, just let the head hang. Soften those knees here. Even if you can keep your legs straight and have your hands down, just go ahead and bend. Really let your body surrender here. You can shake your head, yes or no. You can sway your body in the wind. You can even pedal out the legs here if that feels good. It's your body, it's your yoga practice. Honor your body, listen to your body. Good, go ahead and release the hands down towards the mat. Let's go ahead and inhale up halfway, find a flat back. So from here, same thing as before, we're lengthening through the spine. So from the top of the head all the way to the tailbone. So if you need, your hands can come to your shins, to your knees, to your thighs, to your shins, whatever you need. Just inhale up halfway, find that flat back. And gaze should be between your fingertips. Exhale, forward fold. Go ahead and inhale those arms out, sweep them up, rise up. Bring the palms to touch, hands to your heart. Close your eyes and just breathe here for a second. Chin parallel with the mat. Rooted down into your feet. Go ahead and take those feet about six inches apart or if you're more comfortable, keep them together. And keeping those hips open, so try not to really sit back here. Go ahead and inhale those arms up above the head. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale up halfway, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale the arms out, rise up. This time your arms stay up above your head. We're gonna bend our knees and we're gonna take our bottom back. Utkatasana, chair pose. 
Good. From here, think about still lengthening and that's fine. Don't get here and really stick the bottom back. Whatever that was. Just put your bottom down, long spine, arms up. Now let's say that you're here in chair pose and you wanna bring your hands to your heart center. That's perfectly okay. Bring them to your heart center. Find what works best for you. This is your body, your practice. Good, hang out here for five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, the arms up, rise up. Keep those arms up, bottom goes back down, chair pose. Maybe going slightly deeper. So ideally, we wanna work ourselves parallel, get those thighs parallel with the mat. Look down and make sure that your knees are not going over your toes. We want them behind the toes. Good. Long spine, belly buttons pulled in and up for five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. From here, I want you to bend the knees, place the hands, hop or step back, plank position. Now, in your plank, you can lower down to your knees if you'd like, or you can stay up nice and tall. Breathing here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, exhale. We're gonna take that right hand, we're gonna place it center of our mat. We're gonna rotate over into a side plank. Now, again, you can stay here or you can drop down to the knee. Just keep those hips reaching up towards the sky. For five, almost there, four, Three, two, and one. Meet me back, plank position. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, left hand comes center, rotate over. Side plank, hips reaching up towards the sky, opening that heart, really growing. And again, if you need, drop down to that knee, but keep those hips reaching up towards the sky. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's bring it back to center. Good, and we're gonna lower ourselves all the way down to our bellies. Untuck the toes, keep the hands under the shoulders, and just begin to press yourself up, cobra position. And so when you're in cobra, I don't want you to get here and lock yourself out. Keep those elbows slightly bent, open the heart, Good, you can close your eyes here. You can add some gentle movement just to get yourself unstuck and get comfortable. From here, you're gonna press into the hands. You're gonna lift the bottom up and you're gonna go back into a child's pose. Good, keeping it active. Keep those forearms up off of the mat. And then from here, begin to press yourself back into that tabletop position. We're gonna tuck our toes, we're gonna lift our hips up, downward facing dog again. Lengthen through the spine, pedal out those legs if you need. Very nice. From here, let me scoot forward just a little bit. I want you to take your right leg up behind you, three-legged dog, and don't open up that hip quite yet. So the toes should be facing the ground, and your hips should be squared. So it's almost like you're trying to cross your leg. Keep it nice and active here. Let's begin to bring that right leg towards the fingers. Inhale the arms up, high lunge. Good. So from here, our back heel is actually lifted off of the mat. I'm trying to make sure you can see me here. Our back heel is lifted up. 
our front knee is in line with our ankle and our arms come up. High lunge. You should start to feel the stretch. Good. And what I want you to do is I want everybody to bring their hands to your hips. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna just do some gentle movement, some gentle rocking. So I want you to begin to press the pelvis forward. You're gonna bend this left leg a little bit. You should feel the stretch a lot more across that psoas. Good, straighten. Rock it forward, bend that back leg, feel that stretch. And lengthen. One more time, bend that knee, lengthen. And straighten. Good, let's go ahead and send those arms back up overhead. Take a deep breath in. And on our exhale, we're gonna peel open warrior two. So when we're in this warrior two position, <clears throat> look down and try to get your front heel to intersect with the arch of your back foot. The hips are open. That front knee is tracking out towards your pinky toe. So if you notice that it kind of comes in, try to really get it to open. Send those arms out parallel. Gaze over that front middle finger. Breathing here. Good. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one, what I'd like you to do is take those arms behind you. Try to reach back and grab your elbows. Still keeping this warrior two position. Now, rotate your heart up towards the sky, but make sure when you rotate the heart up towards the sky that this front knee doesn't track in with you, okay? And then all I want you to do is begin to trickle over towards that right knee. You don't have to go far here. If you need a little bit of support, bring the arm down to your leg and keep the heart still rotating up towards the sky. So a little bit more core work by holding the arms behind you, a little less bringing the arm to the leg. Just try not to put all your weight in that arm, okay? Hold it here for five. Maybe your legs are shaking, mine are. Four, three, two, and one. Meet me back, warrior two. Good, from here we're gonna move triangle pose. If you have a block and you need it, now is the time. So we're gonna straighten that front leg. When you straighten this front leg, don't think about like jamming that leg back. We don't wanna injure the knee. So what I want you to think about doing as we straighten this leg is start to really pull up through this thigh, start to flex this quad muscle, yeah? and then that leg comes straight, but don't lock out that knee, okay? Don't put any injury there. Take those arms out parallel. We're gonna glide that left hip out. We're gonna reach forward. And when you can't reach any further, we're gonna open up into that triangle position. So same thing as before, we're rotating our heart up towards the sky, holding it here. Deep breath. Triangle used to be my arch nemesis. And it's always the poses that we don't like or the poses that we need the most. So if you get into this position, try to find a way to make it enjoyable or at least reap the benefits of it, right? So from here, that's why I like using a block and triangle. We're gonna revolve our triangle. So keep your legs right where they are. We're gonna take this left hand down where the right hand is. And then we're gonna take the right hand behind us. So I'm gonna stick my bottom back towards the back wall. And when you're in this revolve triangle, try not to be down here. Try to find length and try to grow. Try to think about creating that nice flat back here. Good, deep breaths. For five, four, three, two, and one, let's go ahead and bring that right hand back down to the block or to the floor. Go ahead and take that left arm back up towards the sky, triangle pose. So really pulling up through this quad. Very nice. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring it up. 
warrior two. I'm gonna bring my block with me just because I'm gonna use it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cartwheel the hands down and we're gonna go into a runner's lunge. So if you need, you can absolutely drop down to your back knee here and keep the gaze and the heart forward. If you want it deeper, you're gonna come up. So we're on the ball of that back foot. Now, when you're here, make sure that this belly is not just hanging out on your leg. We wanna find length, we wanna grow. So still, that spine is long. We're creating that long backside here. If you need that block for your hands, you can use the block for your hands. That front knee in line with that ankle. And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna begin to twist. So we're gonna take that left hand down, maybe it's on a block, and then that right arm comes behind us. Twisting in this runner's lunge. Again, if you need that modification, even halfway through, drop down to that knee. It's okay, find what works best for you. Good, hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and bring it back center, runner's lunge. Find that length, long back side. Now, if you're not down on your knee yet, I want everybody to drop down to that back knee, untuck your toes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work through that split prep. We're not gonna go into a split, but we're gonna work through that split prep. So from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna begin to straighten that front leg and you're gonna send your bottom back towards the wall behind you. So notice that if you stay up, you get a deeper stretch. If you come all the way down here, this is no stretch at all. I mean, everybody's body is different, but this is not a deep stretch. So keep yourself up. Make sure your heel is what's on the mat, okay? And then from here, stick that bottom back. And the more you stick your bottom back, the deeper the stretch. Good. Hold it here, breathe. Now from here, we're gonna shift forward, really getting deep into the hip. I don't want you to open the knee up to the side. Try to keep it really centered here. You should feel a deep compression in that hip flexor. Deep breath in. Exhale, let's take it back. Flex that foot, set that bottom back. Send it forward into my timer to get rid of that timer. It's gonna turn you off and I don't wanna turn off the live class. Send it forward. Good, from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and send this right leg back. So take that right hand to the inside and let's send it back, tabletop position. Go ahead and work through a couple rounds of cat and tail, exhaling when you pull up, inhaling when you open it up. Two more, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, and then you're gonna find that neutral spine. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. We're going back into that down dog. The long spine here, heels are heavy, reaching down to the earth. We're gonna work through the other side. We're gonna take that left leg up behind us, three-legged dog. And then let's bring it through, bring the foot towards the hands. We're gonna inhale those arms up. We're in that high lunge. So make sure the toes, we're on the toes on that right leg this time. That heel is still lifted. Our spine is tall, arms are up, breathing here. Just taking a couple breaths before we work into that movement. Everybody go ahead and bring your hands to your hips. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna begin to bend that back knee, send the pelvis forward. You're gonna feel the psoas begin to stretch out all the way down that quad. And straighten. 
Again, press it forward here. And straighten. One more, press it forward. And straighten. Back into that high lunge position, send those arms up overhead, really reaching up for five, four, three, two, and one. Let's begin to open it up into that warrior two. So remembering that that front knee is tracking out towards our pinky toe. Don't let the knee go past the ankle, keep it in line with the ankle. The heel is intersecting the arch of the back foot. Arms are out parallel, gaze over that front middle finger. Aware of your belly button, pulling it in and up. Good reaching and breathing. Nice strong legs, you are a warrior here. You can fight the war however you want. You can take those hands to your hips. You can shorten the stance, make it a little less intense, or you can go deeper, make it more intense. It's your yoga, your body. From here, take those hands behind your back, grabbing opposite elbows. We're gonna open that heart, turn it up towards the sky. Keep, when we rotate, make sure that front knee doesn't collapse on us. So keep that knee out towards your pinky toe and begin to take it over to the side. Active pose here. You should feel your core working. Now, if you wanna go a little bit less, we're just gonna take that arm to the leg, rotate the heart up towards the sky still. It's all about opening here. Not getting into a pose to get in it deep and to collapse, we wanna find length. This is called long side body. So if you were to extend the arm overhead, we're lengthening from our fingertips all the way through that back foot. Holding it here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it up, warrior two. Now, from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into that triangle. So if you need your block, now is the time to place that block right beside that left foot, okay? From warrior two, we're gonna to begin to straighten this front leg. And remember, we're not jamming it back. We're gonna slowly start to draw that quad up. Think about flexing this quad, making it strong here. Nice, tight leg. Now from here, glide that right hip out, reach forward. If you need to bend that knee a little bit here, go ahead and bend it. I don't want you to put any strain. Good, and let's begin to open it up. Triangle pose. Rotating that heart up towards the sky still. Make sure you stay nice and open, reaching, good. Try not to get down here and use your arm as support. Be able to be here and know that you can pick your hand up and keep yourself right where you are. Five, four, three, two, and one. Right hand's gonna calm down where the left hand is. We're gonna revolve. So again, we're gonna stick the bottom back, long spine, left arm comes behind. Revolve triangle. Breathing here. Good. Five, four, three, two, and one, we're gonna bring that left hand down. Right arm comes back up. Good, we're gonna bring it back up into that warrior two. So bend that left leg, coming up, warrior two. We're gonna rotate the hands down towards the mat. We're going into that runner's lunge. Again, remember, we're modified here if you need. So drop down to that knee, untuck the toes if you need or stay up. Just make sure that you pull that belly button in and up and lengthen here. Almost if I was to send my hands out, my fingertips all the way to my heel would make one nice straight line. Holding it here. We're gonna begin to twist. So we're gonna take that right hand, 
beside the left foot and we're going to open it up to the side. You can take that hand to your hip if you need and keep it up, opening up that heart here. Good, squeezing that thigh inward. Don't let it really open, squeeze it inward. You're gonna get a deeper stretch. Five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and bring it back to center. Everybody drop down to that back knee, untuck the toes, and we're gonna work through that split prep. So we're gonna send the bottom back, flex the foot. Good, remember not to let your bottom sink all the way down to your heel. Think about really pressing with that tailbone backwards. Breathing. Go ahead and shift it forward. Remembering we're not opening up that hip here. We're keeping it as center as possible. Really feeling that compression in that front hip flexor, that left hip flexor. Good. Nice deep stretch. Remembering that each time you get into this stretch, we go just a little bit deeper. Our muscles have let go. We're releasing tension and stress. Good, let's take it back. Bottom back towards the back wall. Good. Feeling yourself release each time deeper and deeper let's begin to we're gonna send it back one more time send the bottom back towards the back wall flex that foot here remember flex for flexibility Let's go ahead and send it forward one more time, really dropping down into those hips. We're gonna take that left hand to the inside of that left leg. That left leg comes back to meet. Wiggle around, get yourself back into that tabletop position and go ahead and give me three rounds of cat and cow. Exhaling, pulling up through the spine, tuck the chin to the chest, look at the belly button. Inhale, opening it back up. Exhale away. Inhale, open. Exhale away. Inhale, open. Exhale away. Good. Meet me back in that neutral spine. We're gonna tuck your toes, we're gonna lift your hips back up, downward facing dog. Pedal it out, move it around. And then when you're ready, bend the knees, hop or step up towards the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale the arms out, rise up. Go ahead and bring your hands into your heart center, fingertip to fingertip and palm to palm, and just take a moment to breathe. So the next thing we're gonna work through, we're gonna go through a couple of vinyasas. Now, if you are not happy in doing a vinyasa, that's okay. What we're gonna do is, while you hold your breath here, we're gonna inhale up, exhale down. When we make our way back into plank, if you do not want to vinyasa, you can stay right here in plank. You can lower yourself down to your belly and go into a cobra, or you can go from plank into down dog. Remember, it's your practice, it's your body. Go with what feels best to you, okay? So a couple of modifications. We're just gonna go through three of these, work our way through pigeon, and then make our way onto our seats. Let's go ahead and inhale the arms up above the head. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway flat back. Exhale, forward fold, place the hands, hop or step back, plank position. If you're gonna move through your vinyasa, we're gonna lower into chaturanga. 
up through up dog and back into down dog wherever you are everybody meet me back into down dog bend your knees hop four step forward forward bend inhale up halfway flat back exhale forward fold inhale the arms out rise up slight back bend here if it feels good exhale forward fold inhale up halfway flat back exhale forward fold place the hands hop or step back plank position lowering through your chaturanga if you're going through that vinyasa up through up dog and back through down dog. Everybody meet me back in down dog. Remember, any, if you're not vinya, going through a vinyasa, hold your plank, meet me back in down dog. Go to a cobra, the choice is yours. Everybody bend your knees, hop or step forward. Forward bend, one last one to go. Inhale up halfway, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale the arms out, rise up, slight back bend if it feels good. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Place the hands, bend the knees, hop or step back, plank position. Moving through that vinyasa if you're going. Up through up dog. Everybody meet me back. Down dog. We're going to work our way into pigeon pose. We're going to take that right leg up towards the sky and then slowly start to bring it forward. Good, so that right foot comes towards the left hand, right knee out towards the outside of your mat. Ideally, we would love to work this parallel with the mat one day, we'll see. So if you're happy in pigeon pose, great, be there. If you are not happy in pigeon pose, I want you to have a seat on your bottom and we're gonna go into a figure four position. So crossing that right ankle over your left thigh and just bringing it in here. The choice is yours. Go where you feel best. If you're in pigeon, maybe you need to rock. Just find that place that works for you. Try to prevent yourself from rolling off onto that hip. We want to keep them nice and squared here, okay? Breathing. Mindful of what your jaw is doing here. If you find that you're like clenching your teeth together, just relax. Release your grip. Very nice. You can stay right in your pigeon pose. Maybe you want to go just a little bit further. Maybe press yourself up. You can bend that back leg. You can reach back and grab with the same hand. You can reach back and grab with the opposite hand. You can reach back and grab with both hands if you'd like. Kick that foot into the hand, open up across the chest. Good, you can even work your way into a mermaid by placing that foot into that elbow crease and reaching up and overhead. Lots of options for you here. Again, you don't have to be here. You can absolutely stay down in that pigeon pose or that figure four. Wherever you are, begin to rock here just a little bit. Good, let's go ahead and meet back in that down dog. If you're in that figure four on your back, just go ahead and make that switch. No need to get up and go down. Good, pedal it out if you need. Good, let's go ahead and take that left leg up towards the sky. And then when you're ready, begin to bring it through. That foot going towards that right hand, knee going out towards the outside of the mat. Good, and if you need, rock here a little bit. It gets super tight. Very nice. You can make your way down if that feels better. Lots of options here. Remember, it's your yoga. You can rock 
My left hip is definitely a lot tighter than my right. Just honor your body and do what feels best to you. <sighs> Releasing into the body. Allow every X. Good. Let's take two more breaths right here. Nice little inhales and exhales. Releasing. Relaxing. Or you can stay in that pigeon pose. If you want to start to press yourself up, start to stretch in, bend that right leg, reach back, same hand, maybe opposite hand. Again, you can play around with it. There's all kinds of things to do here. You can go same hands, open up across the chest, or you can work yourself into a mermaid bab, taking that foot, placing it into that elbow crease, and then trying to get the arms to touch overhead. Lots of options. Go with what feels best to you. Very nice. As we begin to make our way out of this, if you're already on your back with a figure four, just stay there. We're going to come and meet you. If you're in pigeon pose, tuck that back foot. Let's go ahead and meet back. Down dog. Pedal it out. Move it around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to begin to make our way to a seated position. So you can hop, you can step, crossing the legs, until you get into a seated position, however it works for you. Now, once we get to that seated position, if you're not on your back, just slowly, not forcefully, slowly, begin to make your way down onto your back. I'm going to scoot my mat forward a little bit. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to make our way into a bridge pose. So, soles of the feet onto the mat. Try to graze your heels with your fingertips. If you can't quite graze your heels with your fingertips, that's okay. Get them where you're comfortable. I want you to take your shoulders, tuck them under. It's like we're opening our heart to the sky. And then from here, begin to press into the soles of the feet, pressing into the ball, pressing into the heel, Begin to slowly lift your hips up off of your mat. Now don't get into this forceful position of pushing yourself up and like pelvis thrusting and squeezing your bum. I don't want you there. So as you slowly begin to reach up, you start to feel those legs begin to work. Lift the hips up above the heart. If you have a block, you can place a block here if you're more comfortable. Good. Hanging out here, almost there. Again, if you need that block, you can always come down, grab a block, or you can stay right here. Breathing, softening the face, the forehead, the cheek. Eyes. Almost there. For five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly lower yourselves down, inch by inch, vertebrae by vertebrae. And then go ahead and bring your knees into your chest. Nice big squeeze here. Nice big compression. Flex those feet. Try not to cross your ankles. I want you to create equal pressure here. When we cross our ankles, one hip gets a little bit more loving than the other. So if you need to cross your ankles, cross one for a good deep breath and then cross the other for a deep breath. Good. If you want to go a little bit deeper, bring the forehead up towards the knees. Hold it here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and bring it down. We're going to go into a happy baby here. So what I want you to do is I want you to bend the knees in towards the armpits. 
flex the feet up towards the sky, almost like you're holding the ceiling on your feet. And then, based off of what's comfortable for you, you can grab the outsides and pull them in, or you can reach in and grab the inside of the feet. It's up to you. So imagine that those knees are coming in towards the armpits, and we're pressing the bottom, that tailbone, down towards the mat. A lot of times it seems to come up and we kind of rock, so I want you to kind of press it down a little bit here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be all the way down. I just want it nice and active. And then from here, you can rock yourself a little bit from side to side. You can even pedal out those legs, straightening one and then the other. Lots of options here, lots of movement. Just go with what feels best to you. Good. Hanging out here, just a couple more breaths. For five, four, three, two, and one. Carefully release, bringing those legs down. You can pedal them out a little bit if you need here. And we're gonna work our way into a spinal twist. Go into the spinal twist of your choice. So bringing those knees in towards the chest, take the arms out into a T, and then we're going to begin to drop the legs towards the right, turning the gaze towards the left. Try to keep that left shoulder blade down onto the mat. Five deep breaths here. Inhale and exhale. Feeling the body release. Feeling the mind release. Take one more breath. And wherever you are, carefully begin to bring it back to center. Add movement if you need. And then when you're ready, let's begin to take them to the left. Turn the gaze to the right. Again, going with the spinal twist that feels best to you. Good, right there. Relaxing, breathing deeper. And just three more breaths here. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Go ahead and begin to bring the legs back to center, nice and easy. Again, adding any movement that you need. Good. From here, we're going to begin to make our way down into relaxation. So if you're near a wall, a bed, or a couch, and you would like to send your legs up the wall or on the couch or the bed, go ahead and scoot yourselves there now. Otherwise, go ahead and rest down onto your mat legs down towards the corners of your front of your mat arms down by your side palms up or palms down the choice is yours close your eyes tuck your chin slightly towards your chest just to elongate the back of your neck Just begin to deepen your breath here, breathing in, breathing out. I want you just to take two real breaths, just allowing your body to be. Imagine your body becoming heavy on your mat, your body heavy and feel your body relax feel your body becoming heavy no longer controlling the breath just your body 
being still. I want you to imagine that you're standing in front of a lake. The lake is still, it has like a mirror-like finish. It's free from the slightest ripple. Smooth water. Right there in front of you. You can peek over the edge and you can see your reflection. You can see the best part of you looking back, smiling at you. You begin to sit on the edge You find a pebble, you pick up the pebble, you notice that it's nice and smooth, it's cool to touch. Notice the weight of the stone in your hand. Notice its colors, notice its texture. you're ready, you can toss the rock into the water. You can choose to skip the stone or you can choose to make one big kerplunk. Just notice the ripples in the water as the stone enters the water. You can see it radiating outward from its point of entry. The waves flowing, the ripples flowing. Just as your heart beats inside of you, the waves of relaxation travel inside of you. Heart beats, body relaxes, deeper, deeper. Just continue to watch the ripples across the water until eventually they fade and the lake returns back to stillness. Notice that as the ripples begin to fade, your body becomes heavier. And heavier. You feel your body relaxing. You feel your body becoming heavy and still. Relaxed. Deep. Allow your body to relax. Allow your body to become heavy. Release. heavy and still.
begin to bring awareness into your body. Aware of the weight of your body on your mat. You can begin to point and flex the feet. Maybe open and close the hands. And you can reach your arms up overhead and give yourself a nice big full body stretch. You can open up the mouth and let out a yawn. And then when you're ready, I want you to roll to either side. Your right or your left. Use your arm as a pillow. And just pause and reflect for a moment how you feel, hopefully relaxed and at peace. And begin to press yourself up into a comfortable seat. Bring your hands into your heart center, fingertip to fingertip and palm to palm. And bow your head towards your heart. Every day, in every way, you are getting better and better and stronger and stronger. Namaste. Thank you. I'll see you guys soon.